From the way New York is portrayed in media, it's not hard to think that just about anything would fit in that city. We've seen aliens, mutant turtles and superheroes all integrated into its culture. Perhaps this is why when we're presented with a New York City that has become home to all sorts of bizarre individuals and yet retained all of its core identity, it sounds oddly believable. This is the world presented to us in Studio Bones anime adaptation of Kikai Sensen, and today I'll be talking about what makes it really cool. The show story takes place in Hal Salem's Lot, a version of New York City where a rift opens up and calls all sorts of beings from other dimensions to come pouring in. Years pass since the first rift opened and thanks to a barrier that keeps the otherworldly entities inside, the newly formed city was deemed not to be an immediate threat and granted independence. We see this bizarre city from the eyes of Leonardo Watch, a young man who came to Hal Salem's Lot with his sister in hopes of finding a cure for her paraplegia and who was confronted by a godlike entity who forced the deal on them. One of them was to give away their eyesight while the other would gain a great boon. When confronted with this choice, Leo becomes paralyzed by fear and with time running out, his sister makes the decision for him and gives away her eyesight. In return, Leo gains the mystic eyes of the gods, an extremely rare and powerful magical artifact that gives him a multitude of vision related powers. Some time passes and still unable to live with the guilt of not being able to sacrifice himself or his sister, Leo decides to stay in Hal Salem's lot and try to earn money to at least improve her living circumstances back in Europe. During one of his many part-time jobs, Leo is involved in a fight and finds himself amongst the group known as Libra, a secret society that is tasked with dealing with supernatural threats in the city. By using his mystic eyes, Leo manages to help them defeat a dangerous foe and is given an opportunity to join the strange group, which he ends up accepting. The show then follows a semi-episodic structure, with each episode involving the members of Libra having to deal with some sort of impending disaster, while an overarching plot happens on the side. And while Leo is the main character, I'd say that Kekai Sensen counts as an ensemble show, as with each of the episodes you get to learn a little bit more about each of the members of this sacred organization. It's one of the show's strong points, since every member of the cast is entertaining in their own way, from the very gentlemanly vampire hunter Klaus to the reckless scumbag that is Zap. Learning about the peculiarities that surround each of these characters and about what circumstances led to them joining Libra is really fun, and so is watching them kick ass with their unique powers. Of course, good fight scenes and fun characters are nice, but they count for very little without context, which is another of this show's strong points. Since it's a semi-episodic show, you get a lot of tone of variety, with some episodes being very emotional, others being more comedic and a few in between. And they all work because of the believable and well-constructed version of New York that the show presents to us. I talk about world building a lot, and I have a good reason for doing so. For me, it's one of the most entertaining aspects of fiction and Kekai Sensen is really good at it. If I could describe everything I know about New York in a few seconds, it would probably look like this. Of course, I realize that this is a very reductive and cliched view of the city, but in a way I think this is what Kekai Sensen's world is about, not the real New York City, but the perception people have of it from media. It takes this concept that the city is a melting pot of society where anything could be accepted and anything is possible to a ridiculous level, with colossal monsters walking around casually and buildings being blown up being such an everyday occasion that the people in the street don't even bother looking at it, since they're late for work. This absurd city is more than a backdrop for the story, it's the only possible context for these events to happen. Seeing the meek and pacifistic Leo adapt to the city and eventually truly become one of its many inhabitants is one of the most fun parts of the show. By the start of the first season he's getting beat up by aliens and having his money stolen, and by the second season he's getting beat up by aliens but his money is now hidden in secret pockets sewn inside of his pants so, as himself puts it, it's alright. 
of this combine not only serves to give the show a weirdly believable feeling, but to also make it very entertaining, as you're imbued with a feeling of wanting to know more about what lies in the underbelly of the city and wondering how bizarre things can get. As I mentioned before, the show does have an overarching plot that is original to the anime adaptation. It gets a lot of focus in the first season, where Leo meets a mysterious girl who calls herself White and her brother Black, as he works to unveil the mystery in their past and the relation they have to the city. This also provides the show with a romance angle, as Leo starts getting involved with White. I won't spoil too much of it, but I wanted to say that to make for a great pairing. The second season pulls back on this anime original plot and focuses more on episodic developments, which result in more fleshed out plotlines. Overall, I'd say that whether you're a fan of episodic shows like me or not, there's something here for you. The technical parts of this show are also worth highlighting. Bones is one of my favorite studios. I love the sense of style their productions have, from the visuals to the directing and Kekai Sensei is no exception. The show is dripping with style, not only from its visuals where each special attack is accompanied by exaggerated on-screen text and the character shouting its name out loud, but also from the New York blues and rap-inspired soundtrack that really works to immerse you even further in this world, not to mention the legendary opening and ending sequences that are among my all-time favorites, successfully working to represent the show but also being very entertaining by themselves. I have links in the description to some of my favorite songs in the soundtrack and to the openings and endings if you want to check them out. If you have never seen Sweet Song and Bitter Step, do yourself a favor and click on that link. It's such a great ending that it even spawned parodies with characters from other shows, just like Duradara's Trust Me did back in the day. And if you can compare an ending to Trust Me, then you know it's good. On the voice acting side of things, I give special attention to Daisuke Sakaguchi, who voices Leo, as he gives him this kind of immature, kind and honest sounding voice that is just replaceable for the character. Another standout is Kugimi Arie, who voices both black and white. The fact that she's voicing two main characters is already a good sign that she can do a good job, and chances are that you already heard her performance in another show. Rie is a great voice actress as she manages to sound convincing even in scenes where she's talking to herself. Love and peace. <sighs> Overall, I'd recommend Kekai Sensei to anyone who is a fan of character-driven shows, mystery and great world building but can also get down with over-the-top fight scenes and other absurdities. Just like New York is a melting pot of cultures, Kekai Sensen feels like a melting pot of themes and tones that ends up tasting really good, and that's why I think it's really cool. As always, if you liked this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing for more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.